These are 14 Boss RC505 Mark II features that you need to know, showcasing the latest and greatest settings to help you get the most out of your loop station. The new and improved extended mixing faders are a game-changing feature on the RC505 Mark II. They give you way more control and accuracy when performing with your loop station. However, in addition to this, the input and output section of the pedal has also been expanded upon, and in order to access these further parameters, you have to go through the master menu, stroll around, go to the mixer, and it's a very convoluted way of accessing things. But a much faster way to access these further audio sliders is just by simply pressing enter, which is a much quicker shortcut. I quick launch the mixer this way all of the time. On the topic of the mixer page, did you know you can actually mute your various inputs and outputs with knobs one through to four? And the way you do this is super simple. For example, if you wanted to mute microphone one, you would just go ahead and click in knob one. The same is true for instrument one and two. Let's say we wanted to mute my guitar input so it's not buzzing we could go ahead and do so. This never existed on the Mark 1 and saves you from having to unplug your instruments when you're not using them. If this still isn't enough audio control, you can reassign this master output level. Unfortunately, on the Mark 2, Boss did remove some really useful knobs. On the original loop station, you could access your input level, headphone level, line out level, all over here really conveniently. I heavily utilized these when I was performing and it was a super convenient way to make slight adjustments on the fly. You may not be aware that you can actually reassign knobs one through to four to control parameters such as these. By default, it'll do your master reverb level and switch you through your memory banks. And if you're wanting detailed tutorials featuring every single setting on the Boss RC505 Mark II, which takes the boring to read manual and transforms it into entertaining, high quality and easy to follow tutorials. You can join thousands of students enjoying my Boss product guides, the best learning resources on the internet for Boss products. The reviews speak for themselves. I'll have a link to this pinned in the comment and also in the description if you want to learn more. But a super quick tip is reassigning this. If you go to your master menu, output, setup, here you can change what this output knob is doing. By default, it will be set to all, which means it controls your headphone level and also your master volume level simultaneously but alternatively, you can have it independently control the master out or just control your headphones. And for some reason, you can also disable it if you so desire. I like to have this set to headphones so I can monitor my own in-ear mix and metronome separately from everything else on the panel. A cool feature inherited from the Boss RC505 are the loop light indicators. Here, you can customize the information that is displayed on your pedal when performing. There are five different modes, and the coolest is definitely level. To access your loop light indicator modes, head into the master menu and scroll over to the final page and head into setup. Here, you will have indicator mode. And if we take a look at what we've got over here, by default, this will just literally show you the position and status of what is currently being played back. But you can set it to something like level, which will basically give you these audio meter levels to show you what's actually happening with a visual representation on each loop track. So you can see this is clearly a drum beat, and this one is clearly some form of guitar chord progression. Then you would have the same for your other loops. So not only is this a cool light show, but also pretty useful for remembering what you've actually performed. To be brutally honest, the new boss menu system on both the RC505 Mark II and RC600 can often feel a little bit convoluted to navigate. Finding various categories can take a lot of trial and error, resulting in quite a bit of frustration. The most commonly used settings that you will frequently access are the track settings. But by using the track buttons on each of the loops, we'll take you straight to the track settings for that designated track. So this takes you straight to your track one settings. This will take you straight to your track two settings, track three, track four, which is way quicker than jumping into the loop settings and then scrolling around trying to find which loop track you want to actually change the parameters for. Furthermore, if you press the track button multiple times, it will actually change through the pages of the current loop track, saving you from using these arrow keys. One of my favorite features of the new Boss flagship loop stations are the enhancements to the USB audio recording. There are two different modes that you can access, generic and vendor. Generic works exactly the same as on the old loop station, but this time doesn't require any form of a driver. It will just simply record a stereo out from your loop station. But if you go ahead and install the official driver from the Boss website, you can completely transform your pedal. This driver does enable support for the new vendor operation mode that lets you record individual audio tracks coming from the looper pedal, which is incredibly versatile. And I've just added a brand new module to my RC600 and RC505 Mark II Ultimate Guide that deep dives into all of the USB and MIDI settings. These are a bunch of new videos that you can't get anywhere else. You can watch them using the link in the pinned comments and also found in the description. 
If you're maybe a guitarist and don't heavily use the track effects, or you don't intend to use the track effects on each individual loop track, you're maybe just gonna use it on track one and track three. That means the effects button on track two, four, and five are completely obsolete because you don't intend to use them. But an amazing feature is the ability to reassign what these buttons actually do. So for example, you could change this to do something like track clear. If this still isn't enough buttons for you already, you do have the ability to expand your pedal by using these two connections at the back, where you can hook up a Boss FS6 or Boss FS7 and map pretty much anything you want. Perfect for guitarists to initiate the recording process with their feet rather than their hands. Alternatively, you could add further functions by using an external expression pedal, which is a great way to go for controlling things such as your volume and effects. However, if you're wanting to take things to the next level, you're going to want to use these MIDI connections. And plug in a MIDI foot controller. My personal favorite is the Nectar Pacer. Seriously, I think these guys should sponsor me the amount of times I plug this product. But this pedal is perfect for guitarists as you can map every command you need with up to 16 MIDI mappings for things like record, play, Stop. instead of being limited to only a total of four external foot switches by connecting two of these. If you intend to use the Newman Improved input and track effects, there are a few settings that you do want to check. If you jump into your memory settings, scroll over to the right, here you can access your input and track effects parameters. And you'll want to make sure that you have multi-mode turned on for your input and also for your track effects. This will allow you to have multiple effects turned on simultaneously so you can start stacking things or alternatively, if you don't want this, you can turn it to single mode, which will basically automatically turn off the previous effect as you enable the next one. On the topic of using additional buttons and also clearing your loop tracks, if you enable this setting right here, you can press and hold the all start and stop button for a couple of seconds, and it will clear all of your loop tracks. Way quicker than the default setup that requires you to press and hold all of these for a few seconds individually. You can also combine this with quick clear that lets you double track on the stop button to clear off a loop track instead of pressing and holding for a couple of seconds to do the same action. And finally, at number 14, we have got the new Boss Rhythm Converter software. Here, you can create and customize your very own drum groove. So if you're not satisfied by the 200 onboard rhythm patterns, this is a perfect solution. But more importantly, for songwriters, this unlocks a lot of possibilities for performing your original songs live. For more awesome tutorials, you should check out my Boss RC505 Mark II Ultimate Guide. It tells you everything that you need to know about this loop pedal.